Welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, created and hosted by Scott Knudsen, to explore the crossroads of horses and business. Now here's your host, Scott Knudsen. Hi, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you so much for watching our show today, or if you're listening to us on KCAA, our NBC affiliate out in California, we want to thank you. Um, today we have a very special guest, a, a dear friend of mine, Anita Wagner is on the show. She is a writer and CEO of uh, Luck of the Draw uh, Production. She's also the writer of this great book called Freedom. And uh, I want to show it here. I'm going to show it again here in a little bit. Uh, Freedom is the name of the book. And it's soon to be a major motion picture. So, Anita, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Scott. Oh, man, we're going to have fun today. Um, I've been looking forward to this all day long. Um, so let, let's start. So when you grew up, did you grow up around rodeo or were you inter- introduced to it at a later stage? Or, or what's, what's your um, history with rodeo? I think I went to my first rodeo, I was told, when I was seven days old because my grandfather was a... Awesome. Uh, well-known stock contractor from the state of Washington. His name was Leo Muma, and he uh, he was one of the founders of the famous OMAC Stampede and Suicide Race. I think he started rodeo back in about the 1930s, maybe even the 20s. Wow. But I was brought up around it and uh, stayed in my hometown until I hit my early 20s, and then I moved to Seattle but and got away from it for several years. But I had that background. Very cool. So you were in the country, you're in the rural environment and you went to the city and then all of a sudden your life kind of flipped around and you went from the city back to the country. Uh, yeah, a few years later, several years yeah, later, I years. think. A- absolutely. About, yeah, 30 years later, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. So let's talk about living in the city as compared to, to where you grew up and going to the rodeos. What was life like for you? Um, well, it was busy. I left the small town, I had two, two daughters. I had my children young, two daughters young. And uh, we moved to Seattle. I went to business college. My first job out of college was uh, at a car dealership. And then I went to work for an attorney and I stayed with him for about 16 years. I was the paralegal and office manager for a small law firm in the Seattle area. And then met my husband who... <laughs> Um, was working at a car dealership, and then we, when we got married, uh, we worked hard together and we put our brains together and uh, end up, by the time we, we were married 20 years, and at the end of our marriage, we owned seven new car dealerships in the Seattle area. Wow. So we worked what? hard and were quite wow. successful. That is so cool. It's such I a testament to do that. I kind of lost the way. Well... <laughs> You know, it's my life. <laughs> it was, it was fun and exciting. But when I had the opportunity to go back to go to Freedom, uh, it was like going back in time to a place that I remembered in my childhood and, and had enjoyed. And the stress level went way down, and I enjoyed becoming a cowgirl again. Oh, I love that! I love that to go to go to Seattle with two kids and then grow to seven dealerships. That's just so impressive. It's such a testament of your work ethic, your business knowledge. Um, what made you keep keep growing and keep growing the dealerships? Well, my husband was an entrepreneur himself. You know, he had a great personality and uh, just a combination of my brains and his personality, I guess. Uh, just Things just kind of exploded. Uh, our first dealership, he had worked for a Ford dealer who really thought a lot of him. And he had the dealer had an opportunity to buy another store in Skagit County, which is north of Seattle. And he offered the deal to Ron and another guy that worked for him. So we bought our first store with the help of this Ford dealer. And within six months, we paid him back all the money and then started building other stores and buying new stores. And it just blossomed. So, so cool. I, he, Such a he, cool story. I give him a lot of the credit. He great personality, uh-huh. a good car salesman. Yeah, but you're right there. You know, I'm going to give it to you, too. Cause, I was you know. by his side. Uh, I was in back home. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so growing up and even today, what would you say was your biggest influence or, or what was your biggest influence to get you to where you are now? Well, I have some great peers uh, in my life, people that influenced me. My grandfather was one of them. You know, you work hard, you uh, you do be honest and uh, yeah. have high morals and uh, don't 
stab anybody in the back or take advantage of people and uh, just be kind and um, use your brain. Yeah, I love <laughs> and, that. <laughs> and uh, stay away from cowboys. I think he told me that once too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't listen. <laughs> I'm glad you're talking to me, you know, I don't know. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, got a, I have a place for cowboys in my heart. I do. Oh, I had that's a awesome. Great cowboy. That's so cool. So, so, so maybe for people that maybe have read the book Freedom, uh, what would surprise people that have read the book or maybe that will see the movie that's not in there about you? What would surprise them to know? Oh my gosh, I put everything in there. <laughs> you um, really did. Uh, yeah, you really did. It, my life is an open book, I would say. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just that I was a young mother and, you know, struggle. I, and when I left, I married my high school sweetheart when I was 16. By the time I was 19, I had two daughters and I was in an abusive relationship and um, decided to leave him. And I think those struggles of those, you know, I, I had to grow up fast being a, a young mother and then taking off with them when they were six and eight and uh, building a life, you know, on our own. We didn't have any support from him. Well, maybe that's something that I didn't put in the book. Wow. Wow, that, that right there is a show. It's just, uh, it's a testament to you for sure. Um, and and, yeah. and it, it's tough to do, you know, I respect anyone that does what you've done um, and yeah. to give them a shot like that. You yeah, know, so I, I, it, it had to have been, you know, a, a force greater than me because I was strong and uh, I did whatever it took, whatever it took. Right. We, we got it done. Me and my daughters. We're still very close. We kind of grew up together. That's really cool. So did they like the car dealerships? Oh, they liked the lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and the cars. And, you know, yeah, it was nice. It was a wonderful, yeah. uh, we had a wonderful life. We had a beautiful home. We had three or four homes, actually. But our main home was in Washington on Samish Island. We had a nice uh family compound there where my girls lived next door and my grandchildren were born next door. And until my grandchildren were in their teens, uh, we had a nice family, you know, life together until the marriage, my marriage fell apart. And then every, everyone suffered. <laughs> we all had to go yeah. our separate ways. Yeah. Right. So, so we, we but had I the well on that. No, heck no. You can tell in the book, you just keep going. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. You know? I do. I do. I think it's a great lesson for anyone listening. Morning. No, you, you know what? You don't have time, but you can tell you just keep moving forward in such a great way, in a positive way. And it's so important for maybe somebody listening today. Uh, maybe they're not in the livestock industry or having car dealerships, but they they need to hear that. You know how important it is just to keep going and don't dwell on the negative and and, and just take that yeah. next step. Well, and, I think my book Freedom kind of shows how I do that. And when you go chapter absolutely. to chapter, you see that I conquer one thing and then I conquer the next. And then there's something else hits me in the face and I conquer it. So I, I love it. I love it. And, uh, I, you know, we, I haven't been able to put it down. I, I know my wife, uh, Tracy, read it, I think, in a day and a half. And uh, her friends are reading it. And, and I get that. And, and now people are messaging me because they, they know about the movie. And uh, they're yeah. like, I can't put it down. It's so entertaining. And uh, that, that it, response it, it, has gotten from the beginning, yeah, from the very beginning. And I wrote it originally back in about 2010, nine and 10. As soon as I left Freedom, okay. I was written on the book. It took a while. And then over the years, I've, I've republished it and rewritten some of it and tried to refine it and make it better and better. And I'm quite happy with where it is today. It's so it's, good. Uh, ready for the world. I, I, absolutely. I'll tell you what, there's so much momentum behind it. We'll get into that a little bit later, but, um, but uh, so, so when you're writing it and you're going through your life and all these amazing stories, did you journal every day or did you just at the end of it, just say, I'm going to write a book because there's so many details of your life in this book. No, my life and freedom was so interesting and exciting and I don't know what other word I can use, but every day was something new. And when I left there, as I'm driving away after 13 years, I, I'm i driving from Oklahoma to Arizona, got some time on my own, and then my head just starts rolling, and I'm saying, I'm going to write a book. There's nobody, unless, unless they've been really close to me, would have any idea of what I'd gone through. 
and accomplished. You know, I did a lot. I accomplished a lot there. And uh, yeah. so then when I started writing, I would remember I, I went back from day one, like when we met in Las Vegas and I made some little notes, you know, and OK, we did this in Vegas. And then I took it from Vegas to when I went to visit him at the ranch and how then I went back to visit and how then I stayed after, you know, just knowing him a short period of time. But right. he was just my he was my rock. He, he got me through it. I remember he uh, I was upset from the divorce and I remember he let me cry for about six months. I could cry whenever I wanted to. If I needed to cry, I cried. And one day he just said, I think it's, I think that's it. I think it's enough. You know, no more crying. And the way I felt so protected with him, it's like, you're right. I'm done. And I quit crying. But very cool. I, I don't know. He was a good man. We had, we had a good time. That's so, that's so cool. That's so cool. It, it's neat how y'all met and, and, and in the story, how you met and then how it just yeah. grows and your relationship grows in the story, in the book. And and that's yeah. what's so fun about reading about it. Yeah. You know, that's the last thing I, I imagined I would do is like fall in love with a cowboy and, you know, go from one lifestyle to another. I mean, right. his, but I met him seven days after my husband and I split and it was like just kind of instant. I mean, it was crazy. I guess I would probably warn other people don't jump in it too so fast. But it worked for me. <laughs> yeah, wait eight, wait eight or nine days at least, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my Body. goodness. Uh, so funny. So, so I, I know when you and your friend went to Vegas, you you weren't wanting anything like that. It was just a completely. Oh, no. I just need to get away no. from guys. And here comes get away a cowboy. From guys. Uh, yeah, just kind of get out and spread my wings, and you know, uh, get even in some ways because my husband admitted he had a mistress and wanted a divorce over her. And so when I go to Vegas, I thought, okay, we're just going to go shopping. We're going to go to the spa. We're going to gamble. We're going to have a few drinks. We're going to have fun. And no, but and I had no idea the uh, National Finals Rodeo was going on, you know, but we walked into mm-hmm. the casino and all these black hats all over and cowboys all over. And uh, it just sort of happened. Uh, I don't know. We're playing blackjack and this poor guy next to me didn't know what he was doing. And so I offered to help and looked into his eyes and it's like, boom, I was hooked. <laughs> Isn't Crazy, that something? I know. Isn't that Crazy. something? There was your mm-hmm. cowboy. There was my cowboy. And I'd sort of been looking for him in the way back in the back of my mind. Oh, really? (laughs) That's so cool. So cool. Um, So there's so many things I want to talk about with the movie Freedom. And I love how you have your Facebook page, Friends of Freedom, and people can come in and just join and and I encourage the people that, you know, listen to our show on KCAA or watch our podcast um, to do Uh that. Friends of Freedom on Facebook, and, and Anita takes you backstage, and you get to see the the drones, the new videos, the music, and it's so much fun. You mm-hmm. want to talk a little bit about your Facebook and just how open it is so people can go behind the scenes? Well, I have, I've I've been told by some people, you know, that I'm too open about what I'm doing, but it brings me pleasure to share every day what I go through. Right. And I do that on Freedom, you know, like the other day, the guys in Freedom were doing a little video for me and they're at the cemetery taking great shots. And then they come across that big old rattlesnake. And, you know, I, my people on the Friends of Freedom get a kick out of hearing those stories and seeing that actually happen, you know. And then if I have a disappointment, I'll air it. So I try to take, I try to stay positive, but it's not always positive. You know, you take two steps forward and one step back sometimes. Uh, but I work hard. I work. I work seven days a week, uh, long days, trying to pull it off. You, you do. You you do. You know. We have our our private text as well, and you're working all hours and and yeah. uh, just yeah. fighting for this movie. And I, I think once yeah. people read the book or once they see the movie, it, it's going to help people not only to enjoy it and get away from their lives for a little bit, but it's going to help and encourage them. Just like that, like what you just said. You know, you got to keep going forward. Keep going forward. And, yeah. and I think that transparency really helps. And it does show in the book. And and I hope that I can show people, you know, that they can survive uh, different things. Maybe they don't think they can get through it, but you Absolutely. just get up the next day, pull your boots on and go do it. You know, love it. Uh, that's kind of one it. of my hopefully I'm getting that across, you know. 
Absolutely, you are. Not only on social media now, but you did in the book as well. Some of the stories um, you tell in the in the book, it just shows how you just keep going, and you just keep. And going. Yeah, well, it's so hard, Scott. It was so hard to make a, write a screenplay out of that book. I mean, I think there's 430 some pages in the book. You got to bring mm-hmm. that down to 110 in the screenplay. So so much was left out in the in this movie that's coming out. My big dream is maybe somebody will pick it up, we'll do a pilot, and then we'll have a series, you know. I, I say watch you out know, Yellowstone. I, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. You know, I love that because there's so much momentum behind this. And the movie's yeah. going to be great. But there's so many stories underneath the main story, which is your life. And I can't wait to talk about those stories right after we come back. Scott will be right back with more. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. So, Anita, we're just talking about the momentum of freedom and the show, the movie. And and there's so many stories underneath the storyline of your life. That it would it would be a movie, but or a TV series for sure afterwards, because they know the characters, and after the movie, they're going to want to know these stories. So I, I'm excited for you, and I, I agree with you. And what's so cool about it? It's all real stories; they're not made up. Right, right. Very little fiction in the book. Little a little <laughs> fiction in the movie, but they a producer told me we had to throw in some fiction, so I just oh, rolled with the flow. Oh, my. Well, I'm going to give three little storylines and you can just comment just a little bit. So we're not going to give away the book or the movie, but we, I just it's so important for people to understand how cool this is. So let's talk okay. when you were so proud and you worked so hard and you cleaned all the ranch trucks, you washed the trucks. OK, that's a good one. And in the city, that <laughs> makes sense. That makes sense. I've, I've never seen such that's... dirty trucks I saw in Oklahoma. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Red dirt. So. That was a big thing with me when I first arrived was how dirty those trucks were, and you know, inside and out. I, I cringed when I crawled in next to him sometimes in those ranch trucks. But uh, this one particular day, he and his dad were out farming in the, in, the, in the wheat fields, and it was a nice day. And I put on my little shorts, and I lined the trucks up. I think I had about five trucks, and I got the garden hose out, and I'm just scrubbing and cleaning, and I look like a mess. <laughs> But uh, I see this car pull in the ranch, little old dirty old car pulls in. I'm thinking, oh, my God, he might want me to wash his, too. But uh, an old, older man gets out who I'd never met before. He turned out it was Marvin's uncle, one of his uncles. And he, he kind of hollered at me. He says, I don't know who you are, little lady. He says, but I, you're wasting some good water on those dirty trucks. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> I think I I held back what I wanted to say to him, but I just finished washing my truck. He honored into the ranch house. And uh, when Marvin came home from the field that night, he got a kick out of the fact that his uncle didn't, didn't appreciate me washing trucks. And Marvin told me I didn't need to wash them either. <laughs> so I let him go on to save that. that water. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> yeah, that story, you know. Uh, 
Right. You, know, you work so hard to well, make them clean. I have one but... more thing to say, Scott. One more thing sure. to say. I always said in Oklahoma, they called a car wash a good hard rain because uh, <laughs> the wash. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about um, there was a cooler and, and there was a little theft ring going around Freedom, Oklahoma. Yeah. And, and yeah. there was something y'all did in an igloo. And this is true and real. And this was way before um, this was a few years ago. Way before so Rick did it in Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. I think they might have read my yes. story and stole that line. I'm not sure. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, to relax and to get away from the ranch work and stuff, our favorite place, the only place to go was to the Freedom. I think it's called a Cimarron Saloon in Freedom. We knew the owners and they all loved Marvin. They grew up with Marvin. Everybody knew Marvin. But I call him Rowdy in the book, but his real name is Marvin. But so uh, he that day uh, working in the fields, he caught a couple of rattlesnakes, put them in the back of the little igloo cooler <laughs> in the back of the ranch truck, you know, all open up. Oh, in the back end was all open and um we're in the bar that night and some strange looking characters came in wanted some beer to go and they're kind of rough and rowdy and you know uh, ornery looking guys and uh when they left when they left the bar got their beer and left the bar all the, the locals in the bar kind of went up to the window peeking out to see what the heck these guys are doing and making sure they're getting out of town because they didn't have good feelings about them. And uh, Marvin, they, someone, I might have been Marvin, saw uh, one of them pick up the cooler out of the back of his truck. And he's just standing there waiting to see what the heck's going to happen, you know. That guy opened that cooler and threw it in the air, you know, and the snakes went flying and they went flying. And you heard them uh, leaving town, you know, break, squealing tires and getting the heck out of there. They thought they'd met their match. But Marvin got a huge <laughs> kick out of it. Yeah. Well, didn't you oh, lock the door? The bar, the owner locked the door. You know, it's like, cause we, <laughs> well, then they came back. Yeah, because one of them came back and saying, you know, Juan, somebody's been bitten and, you know, we need some help. And the barkeep is just going, you get the hell out of here. You know, he's got a loaded gun ready to shoot it off. And wild, wild west. It was the wild, oh. wild west in Freedom, Oklahoma wow. when I was there. Oh my goodness. Well, let's do one more uh, just because okay. it, it's such a cool book. Um, the tornado story. Would you mind talking a little bit about the tornado? Sure. Sure. Uh, that day, you know, the storms had been brewing all day. I, I want to uh, clarify with you. Are you talking about the one where I'd gone over to take him some tools in the field or are you talking yes. about? Yes. yes. And like the yes. wind came through and I went to the bar cover. I don't know. Okay. Well, okay, the day of the tornado, he called, and the radio, we always have the radio on with the weather going, and uh, the weatherman was saying, you know, uh, tornado watch uh, around freedom, you know, uh, be cautious and all this stuff. And So anyway, I took this, Marvin called, I took the tool over to the field for him. He warned me to get back to the ranch and go to the storm shelter because he figured we, that uh, the tornado was going to touch down. So I go back, I leave him, go back to the ranch. I'm, I'm upset because he doesn't want to come with me and I'm going by myself and I've never seen such a storm and it's hailing and lightning and thunder and rain. And I get out of the truck, run for the storm cellar, can barely get the door open. It's an old place. I mean, it was his grandparents' place, real rustic old place. Open it up. As soon as I open the door, there's a skunk coming up the stairs towards me, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm not going down in there. And, uh, so I just ran for the house and uh, he came in, he came, I just covered my, went to bed, covered my head up with, and, you know, just thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> like, just one more thing. Yeah. There was another real short story here about the tornado. One night we were in the, I was in the lodge and Marvin was up at the restaurant. It was full because people gathered there to kind of watch the storm. And uh, I kept, he called me down to the, my apartment in the lodge and said, Anita, you should, you better get up here. You know, we don't know if it's going to hit here. If it is, we're all going to head to the caverns next door, the state park, and we'll go in the caves for cover. So I break, I, I walked out and headed up the little hill towards the restaurant and a side wind was just blowing like crazy. I mean, it was blowing me over. I was just 
struggling to get there. And about halfway up the hill, I find that there's a pickup and I see the door is open. I mean, I opened the door and got in to get out of the wind and everything. And then I thought it kind of calmed down a little bit. So I kept going into the restaurant. Well, by the time I got came through the back door, I was covered in red mud. Um, no one recognized me. It's like, who is she? and What's going on? But those side winds, we didn't get hit by the tornado, but that I was a muddy mess. How's that? Oh, oh my goodness. You know, I, I, you, well, it just tells you about the book. Whenever I say, tell us a t- tornado story and you say, which one? You know, <laughs> right? yeah. it just tells you the kind of book. And I, I know on, on the show today, we're going to have the drone footage of the movie, you know, some of Freedom and what it looks like. And a lot oh, of good. the pictures, some of your bulls are going to be folded into the show so people that are watching the show can see it. And uh, let, let's talk about the bull. So you're kind of going back to the roots of your grandparents or your grandpa having rodeo stock. Yeah. So what was it yeah. like to buy your first bull? Do you remember your first buck and bull that you bought? Well, I think I bought about a dozen of them at the first go round. <laughs> when I when I got there, he was like he had two other partners in the bull business, and I'd hear him complaining how things weren't going well, you know, and. I was coming out of the divorce. I had a nice check every month and money in the bank. And and uh, one night he asked what I thought about buying into the bull business. And I thought, well, I didn't give it much thought. I thought, sure, sounds like fun to me. <laughs> and uh, so I think I bought, they must have had a dozen or maybe even 20 the bulls that they were buying out of the uh, Louisiana swamplands. A couple oh, of bulls. You know. But so I bought all those. Yeah, I, I gave them a check and bought them all out, basically. Uh, I bought him out, too, with that check, but he never admitted that. You know, we were partners. <laughs> so, uh, that was, And then we went to a bull. You know, we go to bull sales all the time. And uh, it's one sale down in Oklahoma City. He, uh, I think he'd left to go to the men's room or something, and he handed me the bidder's paddle. And there's this big old black bull behind the chute. I mean, his head stood up, you know, this high above the chute. A uh, big old black bull, and I'm bidding on him. I'm thinking, oh, I'm doing good, you know. So I, about the time Marvin came back from the men's room, uh, the auctioneer says, sold to the lady, and then you know how they go. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, uh, I do. <laughs> oh, he wanted, he wanted to kill me because no, nobody could handle him. We couldn't even, didn't even have room in the trailer for him. I mean, he was huge. So uh, I let oh, him man. do the whole plan after that. But I was <laughs> there. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. We have some good ones. That's, we have some good that is fun. So, so what about the calves? So, did you did y'all also start a uh, the calving operation? Yeah, yeah. We had a Marvin had a huge breeding program going. We <clears throat> some of the older he had a lot of older cows on the ranch that were left over from his dad's ranching years, and he would breed those old tough old cows, you know, to these these bulls. And we had some great he had he had a great breeding program going. He was known well. Of, our bulls were known well in the in that industry in that circuit. You know the bull bull business. Uh, people respected him and his ability to breed and raise and train buck and bulls. Wow. I said on the so, I so, said on the fence, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knew it was you um, with his knowledge and with what you were doing. Y'all were a perfect team again. It was kind of like the car dealerships. Y'all were just the perfect team to build this this it bull was. business. And you went to the heights of that as well. So you went from seven car dealerships to Buck and Bulls yeah. in the National Finals Rodeo and the PBR, which is Professional Bull Rider Tour. Yeah. So wh- yeah. what was that like? So you're sitting back and you're looking at your bulls in the highest level. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. We were PBR stock contractors from about 97 to 2000 and about 2007, I think, was our last year in it. But And I was one of the... Actually, I think it was the only female PBR stock contractor during that period of time. There have been others since, but I think I was one of the first. And the other guys kind of looked at me like, who in the heck are you and where do you come from? And, you know, what are you doing behind the chute? But uh, it was it was far, it was great. Marvin used to make me sit on my hands when our bulls would buck because I'd get so excited. I'd be rooting for the bulls. And he'd say, oh, yeah. <laughs> Anita, we're surrounded by these families that both of their sons on those bulls. You don't root for the bulls. Like, oh my God, they're my babies. They're your babies, yeah. <laughs> they're my babies. Um, you know, those were 
were good years. We traveled all over from New York City to Anaheim and everywhere in between uh, with the PBR. Oh, that's so cool. So, so give us a story from the road. Um, so you're hauling bulls or you're going to a rodeo or to a buck and bull contest. Give us one, one story, a fun story. Okay, one story. Marvin had um, a bull had kind of wrestled him around and broke his uh, lower leg one time. And so he's hobbling around on crutches, and um, our our hands were all up doing something, probably recovering from Saturday night at the Freedom Saloon. <laughs> but we had to get our bulls uh, loaded and, and to, uh, I think we're going to Kansas City. And so we got a brand new truck and trailer. I, I bought a few new trucks and trailers. and uh, That was nice of you. He's hobbling around. <laughs> Well, you know, he says, well, we got the bulls now, baby. We've got to have a new truck. <laughs> you know, that's the way it went. And a new trailer and this and that. Oh, my. But we loaded the bulls. And then um, I was surprised when he gets in the other side and tells me I'm going to drive or, you know, asks me to drive. So here I'm driving this trailer, 2,000-pound bulls, you know. I think we probably had about six or eight of them back there. And... We had to stop for gas somewhere along the way. And I remember these ranchers lining up up at this quick stop. And they're like looking at me and laughing. What the hell is she doing? You know, I'm I'm still kind of a city girl at the time. (laughs) And uh, Marvin goes in to get some more lottery tickets. One of his favorite things. And I pump gas. These guys are hollering and laughing. I look and the bulls is pissed all over the the driveway. So I'm like, oh, my God. They couldn't wait. They couldn't do it going down. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I I was a quick learner, I guess. He he put he he didn't baby me. He I I jumped right into everything that I could handle. Love it. I don't know if that's a good I story or a bad story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I and, and, you know, that's a tough deal. Pardon me. Well, that's tough. You know, that's really tough. Pulling sixteen thousand pounds, maybe seventeen and a half, eighteen thousand, counting the trailer. Yeah, when you're going down yeah well, we got a big, nice, brand new Ford Dually, you know, it had all the power we needed, but yeah, uh, yeah it was okay. He, he slept most of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, he I'm had you to drive. Cool. <laughs> that is a cowboy for you. That's right. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. exactly right. Well, I, I, so, so we got to go to break, but right after break, I want to talk about how you found some of the actors for the movie. Great. All right, everybody, we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you for listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. For more information on Scott Knudsen, the Cowboy Entrepreneur, visit us online at cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hi, and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show with Anita Wagner. We're talking freedom, the movie, the stories. So, Anita, let's talk about the actors. And, And once again, for people that want to go on Facebook, then go to Friends of Freedom and see all the information, see actors talking back and forth. It's so cool. So how did you start selecting 
maybe your actors or camera people, the music. How did you take us through that process? Oh my gosh. Let me think who I chose first. I think I first had my eye on uh, Drew Pollock because he re he resembled Rowdy in, in his features and everything looked so much like him. And he came, he's an Oklahoma actor, uh, done quite a bit. I mean, he's, he's an accomplished guy and, and he comes highly recommended. And just to see him, I saw him in a blue denim shirt and a little white t-shirt showing in his little red hair. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's Rowdy. Uh, there's no rhythm or rhyme to, rhyme to it. You know, actually, I should be using a casting director, but when I find somebody that I think will fit the part of the real person, I go for them. Uh, uh, with Lisa Varga, that was a funny story because I had spent probably three hours that day going through the IMDb um, program and looking at different actresses and reading their bios, and I'd written down about 15 names, and that. And that night I was getting a little tired and I'm scra looking at him again, scratching him off, scratching him off. And Lisa was the very last one on that list. And I looked at her and I read about her and I thought, oh my God, there she is. That's my Lisa, or my Cheyenne you know, for the film. And um, I just took a chance. Her email happened to be on the profile, which a lot of them, you had to go through their agents. And I thought, I'm going to send her an email. And I sent her everything I could about the a role of Cheyenne, who she was, where she came from, everything about her. And uh, it so happened Lisa was on an airplane flying from Florida to her home in South Bend, Indiana. She said, Anita, I, uh, well, she called me a little bit later, but when she, when she called, she, was, she couldn't believe it because she'd been praying that God would show her a way, you know, something new to do, something to keep her involved in life. And she said, you know, uh, the prayer was done, and I looked at my emails, and yours was the number one on top, and I read it. And I went like, she says, uh, she says, oh, my God, I'm Cheyenne. Ten minutes later, she called me. It's 10 o'clock here in Idaho. You know, I'm half asleep, and the phone rings, and it's Lisa Varga. She says, you don't even have to tell me anymore. I, I want the part, you know. And then she told me a little bit about her, and we just connected. We're like soul sisters. I mean, she... It, um, talked about how some of her life situations were similar to mine. And she's very excited about taking the part, you know. So there was no turning back. She, like, signed a letter of intent yeah, and okay. we're on a roll. Um, I, oh, and then there's you, Tim. I mean, <laughs> <God. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell that <laughs> one because oh, I'm, I'm involved on LinkedIn and, uh, and uh, I know, you know, I put a lot of stuff in there about my book and my film and what mm -hmm. I want to do. And I noticed for a long time there was a Scott Knudsen guy that was always liking what I'd write. And I thought, well, I'm going to look at that guy. And I looked at your picture and I thought, oh, my God, that's Tim. He's my Tim for the film, you know. And then I asked I you that. and you said, absolutely. And, and uh, just kind of snowballed from there. And I'm so glad. I love it. I think you're going to be the perfect guy too. for that part. Oh, he, he was, it was uh, Rowdy's best friend. He, they were together when we met in Las Vegas. And he's got a good part in the, in the film. And I think you're the oh, perfect yeah. guy for it. I was looking for a George Thank Strait you. look like. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you so much even asking. You know, I was following you um, and just liking what you were doing because I thought it was so cool. And I just loved how I kept seeing these posts that you were making. And, yeah. and just you just kept going. I love that grit. And yeah. uh, I was like. You know, and it just worked out. As soon as you asked me too, I think you've heard it from all three of us. That as soon as you asked, like, heck yeah, we want to be a part. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you've been a great, great supporter. I've loved it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And, you know, there's absolutely. a few others that I brought on, but I'm holding off on some of the lesser parts and going to get maybe you know some big names in there. You know, I'd love to get right. uh, oh, okay, Sam Elliott maybe to play the banker or. There's some roles in there that, that might be great for some big names. And uh, right. I don't even think we're ne we'll need them. We got a great cast. Yeah. It's like I really guy in Oklahoma. I, yeah. I think you met Liam in Oklahoma. Oh, that guy. Yes. He'll do, he's, just, he's just done so much for me. He scouted out locations. Uh, he's doing the videos. It's like, what do you need, ma'am? I'm here. You know, I'm here to help you. And he does. And he, the thing is, he was one of, he was a good friend of Marvin's. Um, you know, Marvin kind of took him under a wing when he was growing up as a young boy. And so he's just doing it because he loves the story and he wants to be a part of it. And See, I love that. Job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love the, once again, we have so much momentum behind the show, behind the movie. And 
uh, it's yeah. so organic the way it's happening. And I keep going back to yeah. our Facebook so other people can watch. But when Liam posts something, it's so cool. And when he posts his yeah. fireman outfit picture, there yeah. you let people watch and be a part of this. I think it's so important to get the momentum of the people that are going to want to watch it or buy the book. And uh, yeah. it's a lot of fun. That's true, because, Scott, I'm a novice at this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've read a lot of books and, uh, you know, try to go by the industry, the Bible, I guess you'd call it. But um, I get a lot of uh, compliments and say that I'm putting it together great and I'm doing it my way, which is good. And uh, and the passion between the actors and the crew and the people that are coming on board. It's like you guys are family now and we're not, we haven't even started to roll, you know. And you that's know, what I want. we are. Yeah, well, it seems like it. You know, my wife says something like, "What do more? More people want to see what's going on. They would love and eat." And she's, you know, she's like a proponent. Everybody is. And I talked to I talked to you first, of course. And Liam's like, and, and Trent, my wife Tracy said, "Let's do Freedom Fridays and throw more behind the scenes stuff." And, I love that and, idea. Uh, I call Liam, and he's like, "Let's go do it. Let's just put more things yeah. out there for people to watch." But yeah. you know, you went from zero car dealerships to seven. You went from no buck and bulls to the PBR and NFR. So I'm going to push my chips on you on this deal too, because I'm going to bet on you and I'm glad you're not doing it like the industry standards. You know, it's okay yeah. to get outside the box a little bit and do it your way. And well, it seems you know, to be working. Oklahoma is doing uh, so many things in the film industry anymore. It's just a natural, you know, the story happened there. It's a natural that we tell it there. And I want to keep right. the Hollywood, I shouldn't probably say this, but keep the Hollywood influence out of it. We're, we're Oklahoma people. We're cowboys. We're country folk. We're going to tell it our way. It's going to be authentic. We're not going to take our um, adversaries to the train station. We're going to get rid of them, maybe, but we're not going to take them to the train station. Or there's not a lot <laughs> to shoot them up. You know, it's not a Western shoot everybody thing. It's just a good old fashioned Western story. And I think it'll be right. well received. I know the book is well received. The Facebook page is well received. I got some great people involved. You do, so you do. Well. And I think it starts with your writing. You know, it's so detailed and it, it, it's not like it's made up. You can just tell it's not. There's so many details within this story. And that's what I was talking about. It's a movie for sure, but it's also a TV series once you get into the detail of the stories. Oh, yeah. And that's that would be my dream. So That'd be great. Because then we could bring in all the the other people, like his parents, his children, his friends, my friends, Absolutely. my family. Uh, where the movie is just a lot about Marvin and my or Rowdy and Cheyenne's relationship. Um, right. And there's so many other stories that could be brought into it. I mean, 13 years I was there, and so much went on. So many other stories could be involved. There's so in many backstories. Yeah. Well, just like you were talking about in the book, you know, the farmers they spent every last penny on seed they didn't have any more money they put everything on their seed and hoped it rained yeah you know and that was it that's that's yeah that's a big push you know that's a big gamble when you don't have any not even a dollar everything goes in your seed for your you got to wait on the return and hope it rains Yeah. yeah and that's there's so many stories within the story that that would work for it's yeah it's so cool. yeah exactly because a lot of the farmers around there you know have the oldest equipment and but but every year they plant that wheat and that's what they planted was wheat and they plant that wheat and maybe the, the it would hail in the crop or the bugs would come in something would destroy that crop but by golly the next year they do it again and they've been doing yeah. it for years before i got there and i'm sure they're still doing it you know probably are they so probably are they loved it it was it was something they were passionate about and, it was kind of Absolutely. nice to be part of that. They all ate at the lodge and drank a cold beer now and then at the stables. And I think it was, it was fun. You know, the town of Freedom only had 285 people, still only has 285 people. Small oh little town. God. But if I could go back, I'd go back. Those were some of the best years of my life. That's so cool. Of course, cool. it wouldn't so... be the same, but. No, no. <laughs> So, so, so you built a lodge and a restaurant and you were making it a destination. So, yeah. and we were talking a little bit about the hamburgers at your restaurant oh, and yeah. the names. Would you mind telling the audience how you oh. named the hamburgers? The okay. Different ones? Okay. Uh, well, we named all of the burgers. We have several, I think three or four burgers. So we named them all after some of the bulls. Like our biggest burger was Monster Mash because he was our biggest fan, our biggest 
successful bull. Monster Mesh, Cobra, uh, I can't even think now the other names of them, but, but they were all the, even the stakes, I think we named after some of our bulls. And really? That's cool. People came for the food. They came for the bull rides that we put on at the arena. They came for the beautiful, to stay in the beautiful lodge that I built that I thought I would be filled with uh, famous people that would want to come to a place like Freedom to get away from everywhere, every place, everything, you know. Turned out that didn't really happen, but <laughs> but they were beautiful rooms, really nice lodge rooms. Our restaurant was beautiful, uh, got great reviews. Some people would thought they were in Colorado, you know, at a mountain lodge when they came to stay out in the middle of the prairie for Pete's sake. I mean, a lot of people thought I'd lost my mind, actually. But it was <laughs> beautiful, beautiful place. Uh that's so cool. So when you designed the lodge, did you take some out of your different houses or did you, how, how, so how did you come up? So you have your houses that are ultra plush. Yeah. And you go to the cabin. So where did the design for your lodge come from? Well, well the design kind of came one time, Marvin and I went, went to Branson to get away from the ranch, went to Branson, drove to Branson and we're doing, we're driving through and we got through the town and we kept going and we came across, I wish I remember the name of it now, but it was a beautiful log lodge on a lake just South Branson, Missouri. And we stayed there a couple nights and it was all logs. And, and uh, when we came in at night, they had warm chocolate chip cookies on the pillows and there was uh, animal skins hanging on the walls and it was all very Western. And we drove out of there, and I think that's really kind of what gave me the idea. I said, my God, we can do this in freedom. And I was looking for a project because I was tired of sitting around the old bunkhouse, and I wanted a better place for myself to live. <laughs> so I uh, designed the lodge and, and then built the restaurant and the rodeo grounds that I built. And then I remember Marvin kind of saying, we don't need all this, you know. He says, let's just build a little hamburger joint, you know. And I said, oh, no, we got to go all in. <laughs> I'd probably put a million and a half, I think, in the construction of the buildings. Oh my goodness! But it was beautiful. I love it. But once again, you 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 wanted to do it, and you did it, and that's what is so that's what's so encouraging in the book. There's just so yeah. many stories. Yeah, you know, and once people get into it, there's so many. Um, I know, and I I kind of like the way it rolls myself because it's all in sequence. You know, it's like yeah, when I first got there, is. six months later, a year later. Yeah, I enjoy reading it myself. I go back and reread it sometimes. I bet so. I, well, you've had such an incredible life, and it's still going. I mean, you're making a movie, and you have the book that's doing well, and social media that's just popping. So it's yeah. just it's just getting busier for you. So so uh, we'll go back in the book toward the first or second chapter. So did you ever have any of your your friends from your 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 socialite kind of lifestyle ever go out to freedom and stay in the cabin? Um, you know, not until towards the end when they kind of knew that I was going to pack up and get out and, uh, mm. and I convinced them there was probably seven or eight of them came to see me towards the end right before I left, but the others didn't want anything to do with it. I mean, they kind of, what are you doing there? And why are you there? Well, Katie was the only one out of all of them that would come once in a while if I beg her, I begged her, but in, in reality, I got to tell you, Katie is, is really and everything is the truth. But my little Katie in the film is a mixture of about five of my closest girlfriends. I couldn't, awesome. I couldn't bring them all in. I couldn't come up with one story. So I made Katie be this. She's one, one woman that's representing about five of my closer high society type girlfriends that I left behind. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. So, so one of the questions I heard, and, and this isn't mine, but I want to, I want to ask it is so, okay. so when you were a socialite, you know, the nails and the hair and all that great stuff. So in freedom, where did you go? What did you do? <laughs> oh, Marvin and I had a pact. We'd go about once a month to Oklahoma city. He wouldn't get his uh, haircut in freedom. He had a special barber down in Oklahoma city, He'd get his haircut. I'd get my nails done, get my hair done. We'd spend the night at the Marriott. You know, live live like we were in a different world for a night or two, and then have to go back because the ranch, the lodge, all that it turned out to be so much work that we were tired. I mean, we were getting tired. Right. A little break to Oklahoma City got to be our monthly thing. We head out and go to the city for a nice steak dinner, bottle of wine, and nice evening out, and get the that's so cool hair done and the nails done. 
Yeah, absolutely. A- absolutely. Well, it is hard work. You know, you need that mental break and you, you, you need to get away because just the stories and I'm not going to share any more because I wanted to read the book and watch the movie. Um, but just okay. just life having to feed all day long and, and, and work fence yeah. and clean up the house because of the dust. It's it's continual. It is. It is. And I had help. You know, it wasn't like I was doing it all. But we, you know, I probably hired everybody in, in Freedom that wanted to work at one time or the other. They worked yeah. in the lodge, they cleaned rooms, they cooked, they waitress, they bartended, whatever it took. And Marvin, we had good wranglers that worked, helped him work with the cattle. And in addition to the bulls, we had a herd of cattle, you know, and we had horses and a donkey or two, and, you know, a couple of dogs. We had oh, a great wow. name. Name was Babe. That was the sweetest old dog. <laughs> So cool. it was living on the ranch. It was, I'm telling you, I loved it. I loved it. I was so ready to get away from the backstabbing when I went through my divorce. And, the, you know, they right. people chose our friends, people I thought were my friends chose sides. They went on his side, some went on my side. And I, it was just a relief to get to go to freedom and start over. I found my freedom and freedom. That's so cool. I love that. I love that. Well, I want to, I appreciate you so much for being on our show and, and, and for having me in your movie. And it's such an honor to get to be a part of telling your life story. And, and uh, we're going to work real hard and, and make it as special if you made it. And uh, I, I know you. everybody's going to love it. Yes. Thank you, well, thank God. you so much. I'm so glad you're involved. Yeah. You're just, we, we've become very good friends and absolutely. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to have met you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I feel the same way. Thank you so much, Anita, for being on our show today. And thank everybody for watching and listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you to all the great sponsors of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. If you or your business is interested in being a sponsor of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, please call our office at 830-992-1786 or visit our website, cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today.